Welcome back. Today we're going to have a look at the body in motion and specifically having a look at the structure and function of synovial joints and the role that those joints play in movement. There are three types of joints, immovable or fibrous, slightly movable or cartilaginous, and freely movable or synovial. Before we have a look at the types of synovial joints, let's have a look at the types of joint actions. Here we have the flexion and extension action. The flexion action is a movement that decreases the angle between the bones of a joint, for example, bending the arm at the elbow. The extension is a movement that increases the angle between the bones at the joint, for example, straightening the leg at the knee. The next actions we're going to explore is abduction and adduction. Abduction is the movement of a body part away from the midline of the body, for example, raising the leg or arm to the side. Adduction is the movement of the body part towards the midline of the body, for example, lowering the arm or leg towards the midline. Joint actions which involve the foot include everversion and inversion. Inversion is the rotation of the foot to make the sole of the foot face inwards, and inversion is the rotation of the foot to make the sole of the foot face outwards. Circumduction is the circular movement of a body part, for example, making a large movement with the arm that describes a cone in space. A rotation joint action involves moving a body part such as the head or trunk around on its long axis. Supination is the rotation of the hand and forearm that causes the hand to face the palm upwards. Pronation is the rotation of the forearm and hand that causes the hand to face palm downwards. There are many synovial joints around the body and while the joints may vary, the features of synovial joints stay the same. The most important structures in synovial joints are tendons, ligaments, cartilage and synovial fluid. Ligaments connect the articulating bones and provide stability to the joint capsule. Tendons are tough cords of tissue that attach the muscle to the bone. They also provide support to the joint. Cartilage acts as a cushion for the joints and provides a smooth surface on the end of the bone. Synovial fluid acts as a lubricant to keep the joint moving and cushioned. It also provides nutrition for cartilage and carries away waste products. There are six types of synovial joints that can be found throughout the body. A ball and socket joint can be found in the hip and shoulder joints and they're very obvious examples of ball and socket joints. Ball and socket joints allow the greatest range of movement of all of the joints. In these types of joints, the rounded end of the bone or the ball end of the bone fits into the socket or cup formation of another bone, allowing rotation and four-way flexion. Hinge joints. Elbow and knee joints are considered hinge joints and allow only extension and flexion. In these articulations, one bone with a convex or outwardly shaped end will fit into a concave or depressed portion of another. Pivot joints are formed when a round surface of a bone fits into the ring shape of either a bone or a tendon. An example of the pivot joint in the body is where the ulna and the radius meet, which allows for flexion and extension of the elbow. Gliding joints. When bones have flat surfaces that glide against one another, they form gliding joints. These joints do not allow for circular motion, but can allow for some twisting movement. For example, Gliding joints include the articulations of the wrist bones and the tarsals in the ankle. The saddle joint is a very important type of joint as it is the articulation that gives us an opposable thumb. In fact, the thumb is the only saddle joint in the human body. These joints are formed when touching bones have both convex and concave portions, allowing a large range of motion and flexibility, including rotation. Condyloid joints Metacarpals or bones found in the palm of the hand, metatarsals or bones in the feet, as well as the phalanges or fingers and toe bones, connect to form condyloid joints. 
These joints are formed when an oval shaped bone connects with the elliptical form of another to allow for flexion and extension but no rotation. Now that you've finished watching the video, don't forget to do the questions before coming to class tomorrow.